Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, I was gonna make like a <clears throat> excuse me. I was gonna make like a rant style video, but I kind of decided against it. Not really because of any particular reason. I'm just kind of lazy. So, I figured I would make a questing video. Uh, regarding you know, I th what quests uh, obviously I've done. Like you know, I can show them all off because I finished nearly every quest in the game. Uh, like you know, just a quick little glance. Like you see, like I said, I finished nearly every quest. Uh, there is one quest. That continues to elude me, and it is this one. It is never give up. Now I will go over this quest a bit, a little later, because I have very strong words about this quest. Very, very strong words. But I'm gonna go over the quest, some of their awards, uh, the best quest, the quests I think are best to do, that I think you should do, uh, quest prioritization, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, like I said, just showing off. Like I see, I finished every single quest except for the one that is very so trollingly named "Never Give Up." No pun intended on the troll part there. However, all right. So to start off. Uh, most of the quests are pretty straightforward. Um, you know, like you start off with really easy ones. Like I think, like kill seventy-five skeletons, uh, loot fifteen, like you know, leather caps, stuff like that. Really, really easy stuff. I mean, you know, it takes a little while, but nothing that hard. All right. Uh, cause I'm, I'm not gonna talk to like about like you know specific quest steps you do, like how to do them, that type of thing. Most of these quests are very easy. There are a couple I will mention on tips I have for doing them. Uh, I think some of the ones that are like most highly requested are things like sprucing up to get the spider silk or the enchanted dark fabric. And my tip for this one right here, specifically the spider silk, is to go HR goblin caves and take a luck pot. If you do, it like triples your chances of pulling this and it goes from like a 2% or a 3% drop chance to nearly a 10%. So it gets very, very high. It's way easier to get. So that's my recommendation for getting that. Uh, old cloth and enchanted dark fabric just farm uh, skeleton mages you could take a luck pot or not but this is the best way of doing it what I did was I would just load in on um, a default kit run at the mages kill them if I didn't get it I would leave the game if I did then I would escape like it for a static blue but all right other than that so you have a couple of choices which the quest you want to do first obviously you have to do certain quests in order to unlock uh, others but like that's not a super big deal but I think the main three questing options you have here for uh depend you know for things you can make because so i mean as you see i have a lot of money here right i have literally 40 keys right here and you're like wow everybody's been like wow why do you have so many keys how'd you get them well it's because i was selling craftables you're selling like golden craftables like this right here for example you sell these gold craftables you can make a lot of money and that's even now after the market has already settled down you could still make a ton so your three big uh merchants or yeah merchants that you can quest for is the tailor, like I just showed, which makes these golden cloaks, the robes, the hoods, the scarves, and the padded tunic. The armor, which makes uh, golden uh, plate armor. You see plate pants, plate, the gear mundubu, uh, armet, plate boots, hound skull, gloves. And then your third one, which is a leathersmith, which I don't actually have this upgraded, because like I said, this is the one quest I haven't done. However, when you uh, finish upgrading this, it unlocks uh, golden reinforced gloves, heavy leather legs, leather chausses, and another pair heavy boots and then a helmet that i'm not sure what helmet it is actually because i've never seen anyone craft it so i assume it's probably not a very good helmet maybe it's like a cap or something i don't know but anyways so those are your three main merchants you want to level up because these are the three main uh, places you can sell things the weaponsmith if you level them up you will get access to those old legendary weapons that we've crafted in the past uh, like fashion of honor lightbringer demon's glee spear of rot all of those as well as new legendary weapons that are uh, the higher rarity of the silver weapons. As you see, like this is a divine bow. It takes two silver ingots and a purple recurve bow to make. Same with uh, these right here. Divine short sword, you know, uh, what's it called? Divine blade, like all that stuff. So you earn access to all these legendary weapons, which these also can sell. However, these don't sell nearly as well. You have to get a very, very good one. Like, for example, you see this falchion here. Like, it's a max damage roll. Has 2 weapon damage and 2% physical damage bonus. I could probably get a key off of this. However, you need at least a roll like this to really make profit off of it. Because, I mean, you see, it is a high crafting requirement. 3 gold ingots, uh, 2 rusty broken swords, and a token of honor. And trying to even buy these off the market sometimes is very, very difficult. Because they're just not being sold. But, uh, other than that... Like I said, armor, tailor, and leathersmith. Really, really just tailor and leathersmith. Armor you can make money on, but there's not as many pieces. For the, uh, for example, uh, plate pants, uh, golden plate. Like these really don't sell that well. You have to get insane rolls on them. Uh, ga gauntlets as well. The only thing that really sells here are the hound skull and the uh, the helmets. The how are the other two helmets and the boots? These are the four things that really sell out of these. And they don't sell for that well because, you know, there's way less classes that can make them. 
However, uh, if you look like the tailor, you can make the cloak, which obviously every class in the game can wear, and it's the best for every class in the game. So this is probably one of the best pieces. And then the thing about the leathersmith is one of the reasons this is such a good thing to level up, if you haven't done it yet or you know if you're close, is not many people have done this because this one is by far the most annoying to do. I'm not going to say it's hardest because it's not necessarily the hardest, but it is the most RNG dependent because you need a troll pelt. So not as many people have access to gold and leather crafts as uh, other classes do, or other classes do, as uh, the other merchants, they have access to those. Because pretty much everybody has access to, like, tailor and armor, and now it's, like, really playing the game. Because they're not hard to get. They're very easy. But, like I said, uh, if you're really looking to make money, I think Leathersmith or Tailor is your focus. These two are amazing, and they're really, like, other than, like, you know, this last quest, they're very easy to do. Like, you turn in the 15 leather caps, and then this one right here is Escape 25 Goblin Cave Runs, which, if you're farming for this troll pelt, you can already do. The only downside is you have to farm for wolf pelts, uh, too, but, I mean, once you get the troll pelt, getting the wolf pelts is only a matter of time. And then for the tailor, this one is a bit harder, uh, as in it could take way more time. For example, you do need to kill, like, some things in, uh, you need to kill berserkers and bats in hell. Demon bats, by the way, are the big... Uh, gargoyle looking things that you find in hell. These are not uh, death skulls or the giant bats you find in goblin caves. Skeleton mage is not hard. And then this quest right here, this is the one that can take you quite a while if you're trying to finish Taylor. You need silk and you need enchanted dark fabric, which are both rare drop ch uh, chances. You know, they have, or they have a low chance of dropping, rare drop rates, rare drop rates, rare drop items. Sorry. But uh, yeah, this one can take you time. And then at the end, you do have to kill 10 ghost kings. This does say kill one out of 10. So. Before this was bugged, and basically it was one out of it was one ghost king that you had to kill, and if you completed it before they fixed it and adjusted it to ten, you kept your crafts and it kept your quest completed even though you've only killed one. So now you have to kill ten, but uh, once you do that, you get access to like I said these golden cloaks and these golden items, just fantastic. Whereas like I said the leather smith is just one troll pelt, and the thing is, it's like yeah you have to kill ten ghost kings for that. However, Troll Pelt is a 2% drop chance, so in theory, you know, you know, all things being equal, you have to kill about 50 trolls to get a Troll Pelt, which obviously is way more, and it's not even guaranteed you get it, so if you're unlucky, this could be a significantly more time-consuming uh, quest. I mean, if you see here, if you look at the top left of my screen, I've killed 33 trolls, and the amount of pelts I got is Keck W, so yeah. I've been farming for that. I've been trying to do this quest. That's I have trust me. That's why it, it might look like I haven't done no progress, but I'm trying to do this quest. All right. Other for that, or other other than that, I think one of the best quests you can do, depending, because uh, you know there are, there are a lot of good quests here, but the treasure treasure gives you a lot of really nice things, and they're not that hard. For example, like this one gives you money and some uh, gold bag. This one gives you five big luck pots, which is really nice. You know that's almost a thousand gold right there. Then this one sucks. I mean, you know, Crystal Sword, Castellan. But then you have this one, 10 lockpicks and a bad cloak. However, this one, this is the kicker right here. You get a gold coin chest. You see, I have mine right here. That is where I got mine from. These things are worth like 10 keys, which is literally like almost 100,000 gold right now. However, you do need four legendary gems. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is rough. I uh, I pulled three of these. I pulled the ruby, the emerald, and the sapphire uh, in two runs one day, and then it took me almost a week to get the diamond. However, when you do, you do get access to this gold coin chest, and it is fantastic. It will, it, it, will, it will make it amazing. Your storage will be great. And the reason I recommend this one is because these quests are really, really easy to do. So, for example, the 15 mimics is unironically one of the hardest parts about this quest in terms of, like, getting it done. Like, all these other, just kind of a matter of time, like, Bengals, this is super easy. Uh, daggers, super easy. Uh, killing Kakas, super easy. Like, these are these are so easy to do. Like, literally just spawn and run on ruins and kill these. So, the thing about Mimics is what I will, this is something I will tell you that will make it way, way easier than normal. Because most people are like, oh, 15 Mimics, that's how to get lucky and find them. Well, that's not always the case. On Crypts, there are certain areas, maybe on Ruins and Goblin Caves too. But on Crypts, there are several spawns around the map that are uh, guaranteed Mimics. Um, there's one area that spawns in the corner of the map that is literally called Mimic Lair, and every chest in there is a Mimic, and there will be, um, there will be like eight Mimics in there. However, that's, uh, that's only on one or two map layouts, which is a little bit more rare, but every map, I'm pretty sure, has at least one Mimic, and usually more than, uh, more than a few. For example, if you know the, the big cage room that has the giant pressure plate on the, uh, on the bottom floor with the cage surrounding it, 
You step on the pressure plate, it spawns the wraith on top of you, spawns skelly champs, archers, and everything all around the room, uh, like up on the uh, railings and everything. There are three chests right down below the stairs. Those three chests will always be mimics, guaranteed. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to pull something up to show you. I've heard people say that. I'm not going to do it. I'm lazy. Just look up, literally go after this and search up Dark and Darker, uh, Dark and Darker Interactive Map and just sort by mimics. It's that easy on all, all the maps. And you can run around, kill all the mimics, restart, go again. I said the bangles, super easy. You can just grab all these. What I do recommend is so you don't have to sort these. Just keep every bangle you have until you complete this and then sell the rest. The ceremonial daggers, super easy. Cockatrices, not hard at all. And then if you're doing HR, then you're just going to, like, eventually you'll find these as long as you're going hell. Because these can spawn in two places. Or technically three, I guess. These only spawn in HR. And on crypts, they will only spawn in hell. Either in the gold hoard or in high rare, like, or high value chest. Lion's head, golden chest, marvelous chest. Or you can find them on HR goblin caves in the marvelous, tre uh, marvelous chest after you do cave troll or cyclops, I guess. Those are the only places you can find these, I think. I don't think they're on ruins yet, but I could be wrong about that. I don't, I mean, if there's a marvelous chest in HR ruins, you could probably find them there too, but I'm not sure about that because I don't have enough ruins. All right, so this is another very good quest to do. I recommend, uh, I recommend getting through these first four just to get on this last one i mean the thing is technically speaking there's no rush because if you find these die like find these jewels at any time before you can just save them until you get to this part it's not like you have to find them when you're on the quest so but this is right here is definitely one of the best ones to do for this gold coin chest and then another now this one this one is another very very good quest because it gives you an extra stash tab you see here i have four stash tabs which is fantastic and if you complete this quest you get an extra stash tab however there is one part of this quest that is very, very difficult to complete. Now, as you see here, it's probably an item you've never even seen before. It is a centaur hoof. It is a centaur hoof. These things suck to get. Because obviously, they only drop from centaurs, and they have like literally a less than 1% drop chance. However, if you find this, you pretty much... Like, just look at this other quest. It's just kill skeletons, kill stuff, uh, bring 10 looted ale five dungeon survives uh you know just each kill stuff there's this one right here which is a can be a bit of annoying annoyance but it's literally just once you turn these items in you pretty much have a free reign all the way to this next one where you just need a centaur hoof then you need obviously like mimic tongue old cloth gender fabric but you'll find up usually you will the thing you'll be missing the most is a centaur hoof if you already have the centaur hoof then i highly highly recommend you start trying to speed run through this quest because like i said you get to the end you do get that stash tab which will make your life way easier way way easier and then i mean this one this quest right here it's pretty straightforward like i said it's just kill a bunch of stuff you have to keep ale that's looted uh you have to get these this area is one of the only annoying parts the broken skulls the bones and the rusty broken swords these are actually kind of annoying to find sometimes they're not super common this was probably this actually took me quite a while to do I got to the point where I pretty much had everything. I had everything all the way up to this one except for the hoof. And whenever I got here, I had to wait. Also, something else that's really worth noting is whenever you do complete this, the reward for just this quest is a centaur tail, which you can sell for a lot or use yourself for demon grips. And a legendary necklace of peace. And if you don't know about necklaces of pieces, these things are OP. It's like one of the best necklace bases in the game for every single class. So if you get a good rolled one, that could be a giant amount of money coming in too. And then I think the last quest that I uh, feel is one of the most important ones is... Well, one... Okay, well, also, this is this is a side note. I don't think this is... So, but for go if you, the Goblin Cave quest is super easy to do if you play Goblin Caves. And, uh, wait, it's funny. It doesn't say I have, like, the check there. But this is super easy, and if you finish it, you get one gold coin bag, and you get a mystical gem. Which, the mystical gem is, like, whatever. But the gold big gold coin bag, that's really nice. If you need, like, a little bit of space in between getting your gold coin chest, which is exactly what I did, you just do this quest because it's pretty straightforward. The hardest thing to do is get these 20 goblin ears, but it's only a matter of time if you just play goblin caves. But like I said, you get all this, uh, these, and then you um, get the gold coin bag. Really nice. All right. Like I was saying, the last legendary, the last quest that I uh, recommend doing. And now this one, I won't deny it. It's kind of annoying. It's pretty, pretty annoying. Because you need 100 gingerbread cookies. And I'm not going to lie. These things are not that common. They're pretty rare. Literally, the way I finished this quest was I would just load in no gear and crypts, run around with a torch out solo, run up to teams and ask people for their ginger red cookies. That's all I would do. It probably won't work now because everyone's going to be on this quest mostly. However, when I was doing it, it worked. But 
So the thing is, uh, this one right here, it's kill five of every class. is isn't that hard. It literally just load in goblin caves until you see what you need. Run into them and kill them and keep doing that on repeat. It's super easy. Uh, this one right here, also very, very easy. Just survive 10 runs at each dungeon. You can go norms or HR. However, this is the one that this is a slow one. But whenever you do complete it, you get a unique fox pen and a unique, uh, unique ring of courage, which is fantastic. But then you unlock the shop. And as you see here, one two three four five six seven eight every single shop refresh after you finish the third quest will have eight legendary items in it every single one and they you see here they cost candy just like normal and because you have your uh, merchant leveled all the way up it's reduced prices so you see i can buy purples for like 15 candy here a uh, big items 22 candy like, you can buy, like, legendaries, like a legendary spellbook for 49 candy. And sure, the rolls are still random. However, that is just a free legendary you can... Not free. It's a, it's a legendary you can roll. It's pretty much getting a guaranteed, like, a... It's like a legendary boss drop that you're rolling every time. And let's say, you know, I rolled a spellbook and it's insane. I could sell it for a ton. Obviously, I don't have any candy. because I. You see, I don't have any candy. It's because of this. I spend my candy like crazy. But other than that, not a lot of these quests are, like, super worth doing. Uh, Excuse me. The woodsman, for example, like, you know, they changed most of these. So what you could do is, like, you can buy, like, they they made it so it used to be you had to level it up to buy things like Francisca's or throwing knives or whatever. Now you can just do it at base because they changed it. Uh, Alchemist, pretty much all this does. After you finish the second quest, you can craft Grim Smiles. But other than that, I mean, you literally just have access to buying, like, high rarity weapons. And uh, green health pots. And who really cares about these? Uh, just looking really good. Surgeon, same way. I mean, literally, all he does is it unlocks green bandages, which, to be fair, is nice. If you compare them to gray bandages, it's like a 50% healing increase, which definitely is nice. However, they're also quite expensive. Like, 21 gold each. I mean, and also, like, these I mean, these quests aren't hard. Like, none of these quests are, like, very difficult. All, like, pretty easy stuff. Turn in 15 bandages, kill some things in goblin caves, and then turn in 15 surge kits. But other than the ones I mentioned uh, originally... Uh, Taylor and Leathersmith, I think, are two of the most high prior ones that you want to get done immediately. Saint Nick, this one... See, they, I, I say this one's high prio, but the thing is, you can't really speedrun this that well. Like, you could do it as, like, as fast as possible, but you can't really speedrun it, right? So, if you see any gingerbread cookies, make sure you're keeping them. And then the Weaponsmith, the Weaponsmith's fine to do as well. Uh, so one thing about this is, obviously, this one could be a bit more annoying, because all... Like, the last quest is, unironically, the easiest one. But the first one, you turn in 15 blue weapons, which is kind of annoying. They do have to be looted. You can't buy them and do it. And then the second one is 20 gold ingots. And 20 gold ingots is a lot of gold right now. Like, not just ingots. I don't mean, like, a lot of gold ingots. I mean, it's a lot of gold in general because they are very, very expensive. 20 gold ingots is literally about 10,000 gold right now. So your options are to shill out a lot of money or go mining. And if you go mining, you're going to get contested, and it's still going to take you a while. I think when I did this early on in the wipe, it still took me about two to three hours to mine all the gold. But, I mean, that and that was with me only getting the gold myself. That's not with me splitting gold with someone else. However, if you do finish it, like I said, you have access to legendary weapons, which are generally better for your own crafting than it is for selling. Like, you can sell them, yes, but you have to get a really, really good rolled one to you know, sell it for anything. But anyways, that just about sums it up for uh, my questing video. Um, I didn't, like, there obviously there's some I didn't mention, like, you know, Collector, for example, because, like, most of these don't give you anything crazy. Like, I mean, yeah, I can show you the quest really quick so you know what you need to keep. Like, you know, you see, like, Moldy Red, Wolf Pelt, Wolf Fang, Grave Essence. Uh, you know, three pots, scrolls, and crowns. This is kill players, and you get a gold key. I mean, this is actually uh, not that bad, dude, because it does give you a golden key, which gives you a ton of money. It's like, it's like a 7k gold reward. Other than that, like, I mean, most of these quests are pretty straightforward. There's nothing that's hard to do. Like, Woodsman, I think, just involves escaping a lot and, like, killing some things. So, nothing that crazy. But anyways, uh, that just about sums it up for the video. I just want to go over, like, a little questing guide and uh, what I think should be done. Because I do get asked about this actually quite a bit. Like, oh, what quest should I do? Or, like, you know, what, what is what is the last quest for this? Or that type of stuff. Or, like, what merchant crafts this? And uh, now you guys know. So, uh, as always, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.